Karibuni Moshami Farm. Moshami Farm is located in Dondori, Gwakiogo. That is about uh, 45 minutes to one hour's drive from Nakuru. This is a place where we only breed Hampshire Down breed of sheep. Are you looking for Hampshire Down? This is the place to come. We have continually won our cup, uh, our golden cup, for having the best breed of Hampshire Down in Kenya. So Karibuni to Moshemi Farm. Here we mean business. And here we want you to have good quality sheep, Karibuni. So moving forward, uh, when we realized that this is what we wanted to do and the sheep was suitable for this area, we started importing the rams. Importing the ram was the biggest challenge that we had. So you can imagine <laughs> importing a ram for 80,000 from South Africa and then only for it to arrive in Kenya and you are told it is all stock. When you're told stock, it means umenunua nyama. You only bought uh, something suitable for slaughtering, not something for breeding. And at that point in time, we had already decided the strategy for the farm was for us to actually become sheep breeders. So our strategy failed the first time we did our importation because we didn't know what to look at. We didn't know how to check on the stock. We didn't know what was a suitable ram and it just failed and blew up on our face. So we made a loss, and that loss transitioned us to almost three years of losses for us to regain our momentum again, collect our savings, then go to buy again more rams from South Africa, where we had the challenge. Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Hello AIMers, we are in Nyandarwa County. El Nino is here guys. It has been raining and it is raining. We've tried our best and we have just had to shoot this in the rain. If you are new to our YouTube channel guys, just hit the subscribe button, like and share. These are some of the challenges that you have to encounter. You see, um, all of them rained on, but it has to, so that it is done. And just for you, we love you. Like, subscribe, and share as much as you can. Welcome to Moshemi Farm. Moshemi Farm is a registered sheep breeder. All our sheep are registered under the Kenya Stud Book. What does that mean? Is that when you go to uh, Kenya Stud Book, you can be able to trace our sheep. Our sheep have different tags to denote their her hereditary and their genes. You can be able to tell who the ram, the seer ram was. You can be able to tell that it's a pedigree. But just by tracing the sheep number on the tag, we have tagged them according to who the ram was. If you look at the ones right behind me, we have them in yellow, we have them in blue, we have them in red. And in the other lot uh, farm that we have, we even have different colors. Traceability of your animals is very, very important because you want to avoid inbreeding. Inbreeding is what kills the quality of your breed. So if you want to make sure you have very, very good quality breed, make sure you're able to trace them to where they started. The biggest question that we always get, in fact, uh, I will just quote a story and a journey I've taken with a farmer much recently. So he called me, he's retiring and he asked me, how do I start? So the first thing is, before you start, you need to work, uh, work on the logistics. The first logistic is, where is your farm? What are the weather conditions that are in that farm? If you are sustaining it is in a high land area, and high land we mean Pali Kobaridi, okay? So like this farm is 7,200 feet above sea level. That tells you how cold it is. Eh? So if you have a farm in a highland, that is the first logistic and the first exam that you have passed. The second thing is you have to ask yourself is um, what kind of feeding do you want to undertake? Is it partial zero grazing? Is it a mix of zero grazing plus uh, free range? Free range kama kuku wa kienyeji, you know, eh? 
or are you going to be doing pasturing or free ranging? So in my farm in particular, when you look at it, we have paddocks. So we can say 80% is done on free range and the other 20% is a mix because we do supplement our feed. Why do we supplement our feed? It's because in our area we have a lot of wet uh, pasture. Wet, wet food is not the most ideal food to give to your sheep. So we try to mix it up so that they can be able to get a little bit of dry matter as well as um, the wet matter. That way you are assured the worms will not infest them. Have I looked at the logistics? Then we look at uh, the housing for the sheep. Um, when we look at the housing for the sheep, you have to make sure that you're able to build your house raised from the ground because you want all the manure to fall on the ground. Uh, the second thing that you always look is, of course, when you look at the logistics, you've looked at the infrastructure, you've looked at the land, then you have to ask yourself, what do I have in my hand? When I ask about what you have in your hand is how much are you willing to invest? I want to encourage you. You don't have to start with a lot of money. You can even start, say, with 100,000 or even 50,000. Buy a few, uh, the use, as people call them, waschana, and you can call, uh, you can get the rams, the ones we call vijana. And a ram, you only need one. The ratio of a ram to an ewe is uh, 45 ewes to one ram. So you can see the ratio is quite high. But of course, you might not have all the money to start uh, with 45 ewes. Whatever number you have, make sure you have a very good quality ram. Because for your ram to be able to serve even 45, it must be number one, very, very healthy. Number two, it must have um, uh, been checked. When we say checked, we look at the body structure. When you're looking at a ram, like for us, when you come to buy a ram, one of the things that we tell you is you start with the tip. Kama yuko kibogoyo, missing any teeth, just know that one is old. Uh, second thing, it cannot be able to eat. When it cannot eat, it doesn't get nutrition. So look at the teeth. The, the second thing that you look at is you look at the body structure. To get to know that you have a pure, pure Hampshire down, the face is black. If you look closer at ours, they are all black faced. And then the blackness does not go all the way to their shoulders. It's just the face and the ears. They are very, very black. And then moving from there, you have looked at the face structure. You look at the body. They are normally very long. They are long bodied. Not tall, but long bodied. And they have like a wedge body. Towards the end, um, like the rear hind, they are wider. The second thing when you look at the ram is that you look at the, forgive me because I do not know what word to use, you look at the balls. It has very big balls and they hang all the way to their knees. The longer they are, hanging towards their knees, the better. But of course it goes with age. The older they are, the more they'll be hanging and they are full. So that means those ones are able to perform their duties very well. One of the distinct fixtures that you can notice with our Hampshire down breed is that they have this <laughs> muzzle mask. You'd think they are nursing COVID uh, that is black in color. Just around their muzzles, they have the black ears and they also have like a gambut or a socks. Just look at it very closely. You see the, the, the towards the hoof, it's L-shaped. And that L-shaped feature has very strong ligaments, telling you it can be able to carry a lot of weight. So you have checked at the health, you've checked at the body condition. So you're ready to buy. Once you buy, you have built your housing, you have taken care of all that. The moment they hit your farm, before you start serving them, what is serving? That means introducing the male to the female, for mating, the first thing that you do is if you need to shear, you can shear. Why do you shear the females and the males? Is for you to be able to clear their passage to allow comfortable mating. You also dip them. You can either dip them or spread them so that you make sure they are tick free and they are free from fleas and those insects that uh, tend to, they tend to have. Like we've discovered one of the best uh, medicines that you are using is called double tick. The moment you spray it, you can spray it on your animal, you can spray it on the housing, and they do a fan it does a fantastic job. So once you've done that, there's something called acclimatization.
So you have bought something from Moshemi Farm, that ship from Moshemi Farm, and you are taking it to Njoro, for example. If you take it to Njoro, it's not used to that tour. Even yourself, if you leave one place to another, you leave uh, maybe Nairobi to Mombasa, you have to acclimatize. So at the end of the day, let your ship be there for two weeks. Let them get used to the weather environment. Let them get used to the food that you're giving them. And even the way you talk to them. Because your ship loves being talked to. And that is why you can do x -x -x -x. And they run away. Let them know your voice. Then after that, after two weeks, you are sure that your ship is all good. Then you are ready to introduce them to each other. That is the male, the, the eel, and the ram. And they are able to mate. Once they mate, we normally give them about a month to be together. After a month, what do you do? Uh, you will separate the male from the female. Oh, sorry, there's something I forgot. So there's something called steaming. During the two weeks they're in your farm, eh? you have to feed them very well. You're giving them multivitamins. For us, we always give them supplementary food and salts, mineral salts, eh? like the salt leak, so that you're able to steam them. Steaming them means that you're, it's like the Viagra for the ship that you're giving them, so that they are ready for each other and their bodies are in prime condition to be able to meet. So two weeks later, you're able to, uh, to serve them and then after a month, you separate them from each other. When you separate them, the male now goes, stays by itself, and the female now starts incubating. If it, is, um, uh, if it is not barren, definitely to start incubating their little lambs in there. So after five months, you'll be able to get your little ones, and you should be able to have ample housing to be able to separate the mothers from the rams and from the ones that did not get the children. The reason you do that, you don't want a stampede and you do not want, a, a, like, um, especially the, the rams, we found them to be very aggressive with the lambs at times. So you separate them for a period of three to four months where they are suckling, they are being immunized, they are being tended to by their mothers. So um, the other thing is, of course, how you organize your farm. For you to be able to have proper, proper uh, pasture control, paddocking is very important. Like I told you, you look at our farm, you'll see we've done a lot of paddocking. The reason is that is called uh, pasture management. And also what we call, um, uh, you want to do disease control. Because if you take them to one place and they have disease, you can separate them into one paddock and take care of them. And even as you're doing your housing, you need to remember you need a sick bay or an area whereby you can separate the sick sheep, the ones that look weak, yeah? And how do you know they're looking weak? Maybe you might find, maybe if it's the lambs, they are not suckling. If it is uh, the older ones, you find maybe they have a swelling on their neck, which depicts they have worms. So some of them might even sneeze and you see them sniffing a lot uh, and their breathing has changed. They have pneumonia. So you separate them and you take care of them separately. So having a little place where you can take care of the sick ones is very important so that you can be able to study. Uh, whenever you're at the farm, the other thing that you look at as a sheep farmer, you learn at, uh, to look at the sheep dropping. When people come to the, sh uh, to the farm, they always tell me, you're very fascinated with the droppings. Yes, I am. Because the droppings can tell you the, the health of the sheep and what they need to take. So always look at the sheep uh, dropping, that will be the first symptom that tells you of a sick sheep. It could, it could have worms, it could be very loose, it will also determine whether we are, you are feeding them well. Uh, so after about eight months, if you are if you're planning on selling the meat, your sheep is ready to be sold out as meat. Um, if you are looking at continuing to breed, then that is where the real work is. As I always tell my customers, a good thing doesn't go cheap, you will pay for it. So any breed that you put for breeding purposes requires more tendering, more love, and um, it, it, it just doesn't, uh, it, it's not just ready to sell just because it was born and was fed. You have to look at the condition so that when I sell to you, I have checked the length of the legs, I have checked the body structure. So when you come to Moshami Farm, those are the things that we check before we sell them out.
Nyama, nyama, nyama. This is what I was talking about previously. Uh, the difference between nyama ya hamsha and any other nyama is that number one, we do not have so much fat, like layered on, on underneath the skin. So you can see what has happened. So we, after just removing the wool, this is what you get. Not too much fat. Would you believe this one was actually 45 kilos? So out of 45 kilos, what you're getting is true meat, not fat. But most importantly is that when you slice up the meat, you can be able to see the fat. It's like it has been injected with the fat within the meat layers. They call it marbling, right? And also, that is what you get with the wagu, wagu beef. And that is what you get with this kind of meat. So definitely, if you're somebody who's looking at good quality meat, when you roast it, it's tender, it melts in your mouth and just leaves that lingering taste. This is the meat for you. But most importantly, what you should know is that apart from that, if you have allergies, especially if you've had allergies with mutton, I'm a true testimony. Hi nyama, hakuna allergy. It takes you all the way. You should try this. Um, the other thing that I really used to hate about mutton was uh, the smell. Every time you'd even slaughter, you couldn't stand, you know, next to the smell of mutton. Then you cook it, the whole kitchen smells. But with this kind of meat, specifically, hamsha down, doesn't smell. Uh, it gives you a very nice taste and the smell is far distant. So this is what I definitely recommend. And if you're looking at making money, this is a product for people who are looking to make money out of their meat. Why do I say that? It's because if I was to take Hampshire down meat, a kilo, I only need a little bit of meat because it's very compact. Vis-a-vis -vis any other breed of sheep where when you take meat, say dopa, when you put the meat in a weighing scale, you need to put a lot of the meat to be able to arrive at one kilo. So what is the price per kilo? Currently, you can be able to sell your meat up to 400 bob a kilo. If you're looking at the export market, you're looking at about uh, 3.5 to 4 dollars. So definitely, this is a ready market. If you look at the Middle East, this is what they are going for. They really value mutton. So it's a ready market for us. It's very important to consider height ya nyumba ya kondo yako. The lower it is, the more they will have problems with their breathing and that's how you get pneumonia because it's not hygienic. So at least you should make the house to be at least two meters high to one and a half high. So when you put up your hand like that, you should leave a little bit of space. Make sure you have ventilation, which is very important. And as, at the same time, it should be raised from the ground. For ours in particular, we have raised it up about one and a half meters from the ground. So if you look, all the droppings go at the bottom and we are able to harvest them. And that's the manure now we use for all our organic gardening. We also use it to, um, to enrich our fodder because we also have fodder uh, crops that we have planted and that is what we use to enrich the farming. So predators can even be human beings and human beings are the number one predators because sheep farming right now, um, anything to do with livestock, we are actually at risk. So make sure you're able to lock in your houses. We've also improved our security on so many angles which I'll not care to mention at this point in time. Uh, for security reasons as we say but also remember there are things like uh, at the farm we have the mongoose which also attacks the sheep so we normally just make sure that um, there is no way any predator can access. My journey with the Hampshire Down started about 23 years ago. I used to love eating my mutton, but unfortunately every time I ate my mutton, I would have a big, big problem. I would react to the mutton. 
And as much as I'd be eating it, the next thing I would be buying are antihistamine to counteract the effect. So at that point in time, we started looking for a breed that we could put in the farm. Here we are. We are thinking, what do we do with the land? We had about 300 sheep mixed Kienyeji breeds. There was no hybrid, there was no pedigree. So at this point in time, you can imagine the, mis uh, the mismatch we had in the farm. We had Corindale, we had um, Merino, we had a mix of Corindale and Merino. We had sheep that we did not even know what they were called. So at that point in time, we decided, you know what? Let us try this Hampshire down. We have been told good things about it. And uh, at that point in time, we got, um, we got about, uh, the, the, well, we started with a ram. So we got about uh, three rams to start with. And at that point in time, we just fed them into the lot that we had. And of course, there was a crossbreed that happened in between. And it was a long journey to purify our breed. One of the biggest questions we normally get is that, um, must I have ready females, pure females, in order for me to have pure Hampshire down? The truth of the matter is, um, you can start your herd with a pure ram and a mix of, um, uh, like for us, we had the Corindale and the Merino. We just kept on, we kept on mixing them and we did a schedule. So after doing a cross on the third generation, we attained purity of 100% Hampshire. So at this point in time, when we had the pure Hampshires, number one, our herd was increasing. Number two, we had very good produce from the farm in terms of our sheep were bigger, they were better, the meat content was good. We were getting customers in the farm. So you can imagine the excitement, especially when we started seeing the money trickling down. Uh, and when I say money, is that we realized we could sell the, the wool and we could also sell the meat. Oh, El Nino Coronicles. With this sheep, <laughs> it can be able to handle this cold. It can be able to handle the rain. So moving forward, uh, when we realized that this is what we wanted to do and the sheep was suitable for this area, we started importing the rams. Importing the ram was the biggest challenge that we had. So you can imagine <laughs> importing a ram for 80,000 from South Africa and then only for it to arrive in Kenya and you are told it is all stock. When you are told stock, it means umenunua nyama. You only bought uh, something suitable for slaughtering, not something for breeding. And at that point in time, we had already decided the strategy for the farm was for us to actually become sheep breeders. So our strategy failed the first time we did our importation because we didn't know what to look at. We didn't know how to check on the stock. We didn't know what was a suitable ram and it just failed and blew up on our face. So we made a loss and that loss transitioned us to almost three years of losses for us to regain our momentum again, collect our savings, then go to buy again more rams from South Africa where we had the challenge. So we got the sheep. This time round, we were able to know what we were looking at. And when we brought the sheep, we were able to cross them and even get a better herd and better quality sheep. So am I complaining at this point in time? No, this time we did the right choice. But also, uh, I have to point out, I am not an agriculturalist. I did not go to school to learn anything about it. So what generally meant is that I learned on the job. So anybody who wants to keep this kind of sheep or any kind of farming, it is very important to keep on studying. So I kept on studying, I kept on interacting with other farmers, especially out there, farmers who are specializing in Hampshire Down. And in the process, I got to get a lot of data in terms of their feeding, in terms of their success and their failure stories. I also interacted with a lot of agrovets, eh? the big companies in this, um, in this town, and apart, let me just say in this country, interacting with them, I got to learn what to feed them, uh, what kind of medicines to give. The beauty about Hampshire Down, the biggest challenge that you get with sheep farming is worms. Once you're able to control your worms, you're good to go. So that is one thing I needed to learn how to control, the worm infestation. And the second thing that I needed to learn as well um, was basically routine, setting up routines, when to shear, 
went to breed because a lot of time was being lost when I was gonna serve the sheep. I didn't know when to serve the beginning of the days. Eh? So we had to collect a lot of data and we did collect data. So as a farmer, one of the things that we've learned to do is to collect data, to understand this is a dry spell, to understand it is the time to serve, to understand it is the time to give uh, certain injections to the sheep or a vaccination. Also working with the Ministry of Agriculture to know if there's any outbreak of diseases. That has been very paramount and key. So we are lucky that we have pasture, but you cannot say that your sheep will survive on pasture. You have to supplement. So we have also learned to supplement. Uh, so when we say supplementing, we supplement with dry feed because the dry feed is like a, a brush in the stomach of the sheep. It cleans up their feeding tract. Uh, we've also learned um, giving them the right minerals, the salts, the vitamins. Those are the things that we have learned to give them over and over again. So the biggest challenge that I normally get is when the farmers come and, and they are ready to buy. But when you ask them, where is your shamba or where is your farm, they give you a challenge and they tell you, um, uh, you don't want me to buy, you think I can't afford. The question is, where is your farm? Because the right condition will determine the quality of the sheep that you get. So the first questions that we always ask our customer, where is your farm? What do you aim to feed them? Some of them don't even know what they'll feed them. So we go through the routine and also telling them our routine, sharing our routine and asking them also to build a routine even before they take the sheep to their farm. So is there a market for mutton? Yes, there is a very big market for mutton. Honestly, we get inquiries day in, day out. But Moshemi Farm is a sheep breeding farm. So we don't sell the carcass per se. So the carcass, there are people who buy the breed from us because they want quality, pure breeds. Because the more pure the breed, the more quality that you will get, the better meat quality that you will get. And of course, to attain uh, that purity, that means also that you're able to cope with those things that we are saying, that Hampshire breed is resistant to diseases. It's resistant to cold or high attitude. So that is what helps. So once you're able to determine what you want, then you will definitely go to a good breed. So Hampshire down pure breed is like the Mercedes Benz of sheep. That's all I can equate it for. Or two, because definitely, when you have a good quality car, it takes you places. So with Hampshire Down, you start your business with a Hampshire Down, it's taking you far. So your market will range from um, Middle East, specifically Saudi Arabia has been a very good market. Much recently, uh, we had Qatar coming in in a very big way, asking to buy the carcasses. And we were able to link a lot of our customers to these people who are buying from Qatar. So is it a viable business? Yes. But if you want it to be viable, be ready to do it professionally. Uh, don't do it as a telephone farmer. Don't do it as a side hustle. Dig yourself in, dig your feet in, put on your gumboots, carry your umbrellas, be ready to be rained on, and you'll get the right production. It's paddock guys. This is the paddock where the females stay. The eels down there you can see they are very big uh, they are very big um, rams there which are used for breeding and they have done this because they want to control inbreed. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Finally, you're here. You know, Karibu kwa El Nino. This is the real deal. I'm telling you, <laughs> we waited for the rain to stop and waited and waited. But it's a blessing. Yes, it is. It's very cautious. 
Yes. Extremely cold. Yes. I'm sorry. But again, I'm not sorry. Welcome to Dondori, the land of colds. But you're doing a good job. Thank you very much. Moshemi Fams. Yes, it is Moshemi How many awards have you won so far? Oh, God. <laughs> it's not because I'm being very proud, but we have won, won continuously because of our Hamsha breed for the last 15 years. 15 years? Yes. yes. I will take you to my wall of fame. <laughs> <laughs> I am telling you, this is just so amazing, guys. Yes. And like I told you, AIM mm. Agriculture will always bring you the best. So whenever I bring you someone, know that is the best. This is the best country down sheep breeder in Kenya. I saw it in a Kuru show. Yes. Everybody is admiring the sheep. Uh -huh. Wow. It has been a journey. It has. From importing from South Africa, uh -huh. losing them <laughs> until you're here. Yes. What is one of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. that you've encountered? Knowledge mm -hmm. and data collection. Wow. In fact, let me tell you, when we started mm -hmm. uh, the, the journey of the sheep, especially mm -hmm. Hamsha, there was no data on Hamsha down. Up to today, most people don't get the right data on Hamsha down. Uh, so basically, when you don't have the right data, there's no way you're going. So data collection has been a problem. Even support, you know, simple things that you'd like to do when you go to the government offices, you still don't get a lot of data. Like I'll tell you, some of them actually come to us to learn from us. Not because I'm embarrassing them, but if they are coming to learn from us, who will I learn from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We thank God because today there's Dr. Google. Wow. We are able to learn mm -hmm. and we are able to email and interact with people out there. Amazing. Yes. When one thinks about... Um, a Hampshire down mm -hmm. sheep. Mm -hmm. What should come in the mind of this person? Let's think of the value addition from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of the wool. Mm -hmm. So you, the wool, if you decide to be crafty, like some of the people who've been there, they are doing a lot of crafts. They are selling them abroad. Think of the carcass, the meat. You can sell the meat. Think of the breeding element. You can become a sheep breeder, specifically Hampshire breeder, and be able to sell. So that is a total package for you. Yeah, and you can go even further. If you want to do something like doing a restaurant or a butchery yourself, mm -hmm. you can be able to do it. So it's as far as your mind can stretch, the opportunity is all yours. And don't forget, mm -hmm. there's even more. Mm -hmm. Have you thought that the droppings of the Hampshire down can be used as manure? Wow. You can use it as manure. Mm -hmm. You can even be able to make biogas from it from it amazing so there's a there's a whole trail of value addition for you guys mm -hmm. the youth who are mostly watching us eh? when you think about the hamstring down don't just think about meat like she's just mentioned think about being a breeder you know because mm -hmm. what you're trying to do as aim agriculture mm -hmm. is to bring for you experts and mm -hmm. experienced farmers like Shemi farms so that we do away with the traditional sheep, a sheep that takes three years to mature. Yes. And you cannot serve it at your table. Just know this one. Mm-hmm. Nikondo. Nikondo. Na hii kondo shangu sisahau. Ukitengenezeo viatu ama belt na ayo. Uh-huh. It's called juu. Uh-huh. Si juu kipita pale limuru unaonanga tukape tutume chanuliwa. Very nice. Ndiyo hizo sasa. Wow. So alafu ukikuja kwa nyumba ili imetengenezeo na timber floor. Mm -hmm. They are called the polishers. Unaona wase wanavaa wana polish the floor. This is the sheep that they normally use. Yeah. These business ideas are unlimited, mm -hmm. you know. So think about the wool, mm -hmm. making carpets. Yes. Nice belts. Yes. You know, and just making even brushes. And soft toys. Soft toys. Yes. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I really love the journey. Mm -hmm. A journey of farming, roughly how many years? Uh, personally, I have done the farming for 23 years. 23 years? 23 years. Of course, when I started, I wasn't serious about it. I wasn't excited about it because it was just animals that didn't look too good in my eye. Mm -hmm. But when I started enjoying the meat, mm -hmm. some passion just came from me. I love cooking. Mm -hmm. So the first day when I cooked this meat, mm -hmm. the taste, the flavor, then I didn't react to the meat, I was sold. I wanted to make sure that I could buy the meat continuously, or rather have it continuously. So I started changing the herd good. that was in this farm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now, when you talk about 
I've looked at the farm. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the numbers, mm -hmm. what numbers are we looking at? Right now we are talking about 184. 184? 184. 184. And I've seen the space is not very big. The space is not very big, but again, we've managed the state space. Uh -huh. So space management is key. You can have a very big space, but poorly managed. It will not serve you. You can have a small space, but well managed. Wow. So for us, what we've tried to do, we've tried to do very good paddocking so that we are able to manage the space. So people have been asking, so how do I paddock? How do I determine my paddocking? So of course, we determine the paddocking based on the EUs, the RAMs, and of course, Babayake and Inani, you see. So we do not want to have inbreeding, so we are able to separate them. And even the sequence are separated. Yeah. I think one thing that is very important mm -hmm. and I've loved about your ship mm -hmm. is hygiene. Mm. How have you managed to attain these hygiene standards? Because someone is watching us mm. and he or she would wish to start this venture. Yes. Please advise us. Yeah? The first thing, of course, is a structure. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about the housing for this ship, is very paramount. Most people put their ship on the ground. Oh. Ship are not supposed to be put on the ground. Mm -hmm. The housing of the ship must be raised from the ground yep. so that all the droppings can go down. And that's how you can harvest the manure. But apart from that, the fleas and the, um, what can I call them? Any infestation that would come from the, from the droppings does not get to the sheep. The second thing is, of course, shearing. We shear them twice a year. Twice a year. Twice a year. Because the more woolly they are, the more they attract a lot of dirt. And the other thing also, it makes it hard for them to breed. The third thing, of course, is the docking. People have always asked, why do these sheep have small tails or no tails? The reason is, it's not that they were born without, but you have to dock them. It will help with the breeding when it comes to the mating. But secondly, it's also very hygienic. Because, eh? of course, they don't use tissue. So that is what makes the difference. Well, yeah. maybe just to add, mm -hmm. tail docking is also very important mm. because you control something called soft life. Yes. And tail docking is also very important mm. because it helps also increase mm. the spread of the fat yes. in the body. Yes. Wow. I'm so humble and so amazed. Mm. You really motivate us yes. to think like we should even try this thing tomorrow. Please do. One question someone will ask mm. is, the Shelby Farms has shown us their sheep. Yes. They are good. Yes. Very nice. Yes. But can we buy them? Oh, yes. These sheep are for buying. Mm -hmm. And they are for the people who want to start breeding sheep. Mm -hmm. In fact, very soon we'll be rolling out packages whereby you'll be able to buy for every uh, four ewes, you'll be able to buy one ram. Their packages are coming just for you this December. <laughs> instead, of, instead of investing in Kukula Nyama Pekeake, mm -hmm. Why don't you invest in starting your farming venture? So the reason we have devised that package is because we have listened to our customers. And our customers have asked us, when I come to buy, can I start immediately? I want you to start immediately building your herd. So you buy four ewes, that is the females, to one ram. Four so ewes, one ram. Mm, there is a package coming up which will be able to tell you the price very soon. Keep us posted. Contact us all the time to Koapa. We want you to grow. You have a Facebook page? Yes, we do have a Facebook page. Our Facebook page is Moshemi Farm. Just Moshemi Farm. You'll yeah. be able to get to our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You can also reach us on 0722 36 1116. I'll repeat again 0722. 36, 11, 16. Simume pata number. Don't say we did not tell you. Mupige simu. You have to learn from the best to get the best. And the thing, actually the title should be the theme yes. of Mshemi. Guys, today you are helping Mshemi by giving them some targets yes. and some theme. Yes. And the theme should be yes. Operation uh -huh. Kick Out the Local Breeds. <laughs> I love that mission. Um, actually, it will be our objective. Actually, our mission mm -hmm. is a food on every plate. Mm -hmm. 
and food on every plate why we say food on every plate is because Moshami farm when you buy a sheep from Moshami farm you should value add from beginning to the end so that means if you're a farmer you have your biogas you have your fertilizer you have your charcoal because you can make charcoal from the manure and you have the meat and you have the hide and you have your carpet what else do you want do you know that uh, did you know that uh, manure mm -hmm. or droppings mm -hmm. from sheep and mm -hmm. goats mm -hmm. is one of the best i didn't know with the almost the highest actually the highest nitrogen uh -huh. is in them in their droppings wow now why not ask mm -hmm. this sheep mm -hmm. at any instance mm -hmm. do you get um, like infections like sickness you know there is no more sickness eh? mm -hmm. One would encounter in an animal, let's mm. say pneumonia, mm -hmm. um, dysentery. Mm -hmm. What are some of the common diseases that one would expect mm -hmm. in trying to start this business? Uh -huh. One of the most frustrating things that I've found in sheep, mm -hmm. and uh, that is worms. Especially for Hampshire Down, worms is what can finish your head off. So you have to adopt a regular deworming structure and the schedule should be, you should, must be very critical. Yani, I, I don't know what word I would use. You must be very deliberate to eliminate the worms because if you do not take care of the worms, you're, you're a done deal. That's number one. Number two, the other thing that has really, um, could actually mess up your sheep is of course hygiene. If your hygiene is not good, you will get the fleas, you will get, um, there's this uh, disease that we normally get that um, they call it the puppy liver disease. That one attacks them because of the ticks. Basically the ticks are, you know, they are bleeding them. So they end up with a pulpy liver and it, it strains them. The other one of course is pneumonia. Pneumonia is not too much, but it is there. I will give you an experience that I had about uh, six years ago. After keeping this ship for that long, we had never experienced it. So at that point in time, we got something called the pink eye disease. Literally, it affects the eyes of the sheep. And you'd find that the eye pops out, literally pops out of the sheep. And they're in so much pain, they are not able to feed. So they start, okay, standard, standard growth. Their children uh, have high mortality, or rather the lambs have very high mortality. And they are very thin. That is one of the things that we had as a problem. But you can imagine after being in the trade for almost 23 years, we never experienced it until six years ago. And apparently it's uh, brought by the wind and um, it attacked this ship and it took us, we lost, we, we lost a lot of sheep. It took us three years to clean the herd and to get them well. And you asked of the challenges is because as we went to the market, we couldn't get the right medication for the sheep. And even we couldn't get um, somebody who could actually tell you what are we facing. And the person who came and told us it's pink eye was actually from the labs, uh, the government labs. He told us it was pink eye, but getting the right medication to put into the ship was hard. Mm -hmm. Because you treat it down the line six months, it has developed resistance. Mm -hmm. You have to change the medication. The medication is not readily available. So that is one of the challenges that we had. In fact, we went to Kienyej. We learned organic treatment at that point in time. Did it work? It worked. Wow. Yes, it really worked. We did a lot of organic treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point in time, it even helped than what we could get in the market. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, that was one of the hardest hits that we got. Because mm -hmm. it reduced our herd to about 60 sheep. From how many? At that time, we had about 210. Oh my goodness. It was bad. And then there was high mortality on the lambs, mm. very high mortality, because they, they were being born with this disease and um, it wouldn't just go, it was really bad. So th these are some of the things that we really need to check out. I, I wouldn't say pink eye is a regular disease, but should you see that your sheep has very red eyes and um, they are starting to look as if they are popping, it's time to take action can start washing them with salty water, diluted salty water, it helps. Amazing. Yeah. So if one wants to start, mm. what is the best age mm. of a sheep mm -hmm. that you recommend? 
if you're starting. Of course you told us. Yes. We look at the teeth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're starting, uh -huh. There is no need of starting with very old sheep. The reason I say that, I'm imagining you are zero. Mm -hmm. So innocent, you are zero. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, I would tell you, get four-month-old sheep, okay? Mm -hmm. Or even five-month-old sheep. And at that point in time, get a ram that is about six to eight months. Why? Remember, you'll be serving them to virgin ewes. Mm -hmm. So the bigger the sheep, the more it will, the you will not be able to handle the pressure. Mm -hmm. So don't get them a very uh, like old sheep. Mm -hmm. It will just uh, give them problems. They will have problems with labor. Mm -hmm. So you want to, they are almost the same age. Almost. Yeah. Yes. So number one, they acclimatize in your farm. Yeah. And then they just grow into your system. Mm -hmm. And then at that point in time, they also give you a longer service. Mm -hmm. Because the first time you serve them, you can be able to serve those four months old up to the age of three to four years mm -hmm. with the same one, sh one ram. Then after that, the ones which are being born, you will get them a new ram. Not maybe from the same, not maybe, in fact, it cannot be from the same seer. So you'll get them another ram. So it's a very good start for you. Yeah. So when these ones are born, again, when they turn four months, you get another six months ram. Yeah. You wait for the, the ram will not be able to serve them at six months. Yep. You'll have to wait to 12 months to 14 months. Mm -hmm. And these ones will not be able to carry a pregnancy up to the age of eight months. So you have to wait. Ideal uh, size for carrying a good pregnancy, one year. But if you're feeding them very well, eight months they can. Guys, you've had that science. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the science from a farmer. You know, experienced farmer, you know? Um, I really love the experience because the conversation tells us your experience mm. and you're able to advise us on the best sizes mm. to start with. Mm -hmm. My final question would be, mm -hmm. the hampshire down. Mm -hmm. We see where we are now, it's very cold Yes. and the door is known to be very cold. Mm. And we're talking about during farming, mm. like some one wants to buy the sheep mm -hmm. and lose your grazing. Mm. Is this sheep like you know it must be put under certain climatic conditions mm -hmm. or it's a sheep that is can do in any climatic condition? Let's start this way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a sheep ideal for high attitude. Cold areas. Cold areas. Mm -hmm. Like where we are standing, it's 7,200 feet above sea level. Wow. So that just tells you the temperatures are correct for it. Mm -hmm. So please do not take this sheep to Mombasa. to Mombasa. It cannot even bask under the sun. It will sweat to death. And when I say death, it dies literally. Mm -hmm. So just know it's a high island sheep. And one of the things that I normally get with my customers is that they want to buy because they so it looks good, it, uh, it packs up meat very f fast. It's a very docile kind of sheep because you, you won't find it doing funny things like the sheep that you hear, Ilivunja kwa neiba, ikaruka, ikaenda kuiba. You won't hear such stories about it. So they really want to engage in this kind of farming. But one thing I always tell you, if you don't have a high attitude in your area, please save your money. Please save your money. Breed. Yeah, look for another breed. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the best shows mm -hmm. we've had. Mm -hmm. We've listened to you, we've had your journey, you're so motivated. Mm -hmm. And we are really happy that you've given the information out to the youth openly mm -hmm. and willfully. <laughs> Amos, we really are impressed and we hope you've enjoyed the show. You've learned. You know, as we always say, it is on the farm. Whether it's raining or not, mm -hmm. whether it's windy or not, mm -hmm. because aimers are farmers, mm -hmm. then you have to take them to the farm. Yes. And that's why you have to come all along this. We have to release the director to do some deliveries. Actually, the ship that you saw has have a conversation with to a client somewhere who is eagerly waiting for the delicas. And it was the best moment and the best interview. Thank you so much. Asante sana. And I will come for two. <laughs> yes. Eus. <laughs> Karibu. And I'll name them one Mshemi, one Dondori. <laughs> <laughs> Karibu sana. Asante. <laughs>
Oh, that was nice, guys. We had a nice time on the song. <laughs>